in about 2007, really, something really interesting happened. The Chinese government fired a missile uh, and fired a missile into space and hit a satellite traveling at about 18,000 miles an hour. So if you're in the security space, you think, hmm, you know, this, this is a bit of a problem. For the first time, we saw space militarized. Think of if we didn't have that space advantage. Think if that they could militarize space and launch killer satellites that take out other satellites to make sure that we don't have that te technological advantage on the battlefield. So if you're a country like China, they're starting to build their uh, carrier fleet. They're on their second uh, carrier. They, and they're going to continue to do that, but what one way could you get at the United States to give them a, a, at least a str strategic advantage in our disadvantage? You go after our satellites. So they did that in 2007. They fired it, and as an old FBI agent, I can tell you, firing a missile from the ground and hitting a satellite traveling at 18,000 miles an hour, we would say, is a good shot. But just to show you that the rest of the world perceives what we do. Now, even if we don't mean it that way, they're perceiving that the United States is pulling back from the world that they, we just don't have the courage, the guts, the fortitude, the interest in staying engaged diplomatically. And with, uh, you know, there's nothing like diplomacy says the seventh fleet, right? That's always the quicker way to yes uh, when you're talking to countries. You're having the capability to have a very full, full choice spectrum when you're dealing with another country that may be doing something not in your interests. So when the world perceives we're pulling back, they're going in. About That's why you see North Korea who, in spite of pretty strong warnings coming out of the White House, fired another missile. And we saw them, and I don't know about the rest of you, but uh, you know, Kim Jong-un doesn't give me a lot of faith in what we would call rational behavior. <laughs> Think about where hackers have gotten into. I told you about the uh, hackers getting into the uplinks and downlinks of our satellite systems. They have taken a, an autonomous car and slammed on the brakes at 70 miles an hour. Uh, you are in. You you buy your uh, your, uh, your child a Barbie to play with, and you want to you want to do the great thing. So it's a granddaughter or a daughter, and you buy this Barbie, and you say, "Hey, go have a good time. I'm going to be in the kitchen doing whatever I'm doing or doing some reading." They're in their room playing, and it's interactive, right? It's an interactive Barbie, so you can talk to it and talk about you know hairstyles and clothes and Malibu and all that stuff, right? They have found that hackers have been able to get into that and communicate to that child in your house in the back of your room, right? That's happening. So there are different estimates on the size of the dark web, and the reason no one actually knows, it's very hard to map. Um, we're getting better, we, t private technology companies, by the way, are getting better at trying to understand the nodes and the addresses and how they're interrelated, and that's how we're going out and saying, well, we'll what we would do in our company would say, we're gonna take your credentials, and then we're gonna search the deep and dark web to see if they're for sale anywhere. Uh, and that's how we would get at it. And through that process, what we have found is you can start to map, map the deep and dark web. I'm not a big fan of Bitcoin. I know a lot of people are excited about it. It is just, everybody familiar with Bitcoin? Yeah, it's a, it's a currency that's backed by a mathematical algorithm. Uh, there's no currency backing it up. There's no gold, there's no government. Uh, and that's primarily used in illicit trades, right? The Silk Road was drugs which was unbelievable, but they use it in, in uh, human trafficking and every international organized crime event you can think of uh, is what they're using it in. And so I argue that they, the government should look at some way of requiring, if you, know, you want to, I'm for all commercial enterprise, but you're going to have to clearly demonstrate that you can back up your currency. Because right now, it is completely used for the purpose, oh, well, not completely, but 98% used for illicit activity, and because we can't quite map that whole deep and dark web, they keep moving it around. Uh, you, can see, you can just know where the problems are, are, are coming with. It, it is a huge problem that we don't fully understand the implications uh, of how big and aggressive it is, and I think it's going to get bigger. 